Hey everyone, it's me Joji, and today we're going to take a look at two new archetypes coming out for post-rotation. Now, technically they become tournament legal for post-rotation, which happens April 5th, but these also become tournament legal, so technically it's post-rotation, but regardless, these two new archetypes are going to be the Ancient Box and Future Box. Because we're going to be covering multiple decks in this video, I will say check out the chapters if you want to just skip to the type that you want to look at, and they will be denoted as, you know, whatever type of deck they are within the four chapters for those deck lists. So if you want to just skip around to take a look at those specific deck lists for each or either ancient or future, go ahead and go to those points in the video. And we're going to start off with the ancient Pokemon from the past. Specifically, this is going to be most likely your deck that you're going to see more often it's going to be raging bolt ex now this kind of works like the rayquaza v max if you didn't remember what that does essentially it's secondary attack does 70 times the amount of basic energy you discard and you get to choose which type of basic energy you discard in this case we're going to be discarding a lot of fighting energy off the raging bolt ex now how are we going to get that raging bolt ex's attack to do massive damage well Sandy Shock CX has an ability called Magnetic Absorption, which lets us move one basic fighting energy onto it if we have four or less prize cards remaining. So after you've taken a knockout off a EX V Pokemon or something off, maybe, I don't know, if you somehow are able to fit an Iron Hands EX in here, but just getting those two prize cards, you can start using this ability to do even more damage on and on. So we're going to be running a 3 Ranging Bolt and a 3 Sandy Shock in this deck. That way we can at least have 2 on the bench and then get 2 every single turn. Now Ranging Bolt EX is good on its own, but obviously we want to have at least one more attacker. So I decided to put in the newer basic non-EX Coridon into here for its Primeval Battering, which does 30 times the amount of Ancient Pokemon in play. So presumably... You might have, I don't know, four, hopefully five in play, minus, you know, maybe having the, uh, as you can see, the Luminion and Squawk Belly, Radiant Greninja, and the other Pokemon we'll talk about in a second in play, but at least you can do 150 damage and get some knockouts with the basic Pokemon that way. If you're lucky enough to have all of them as ancient Pokemon, obviously you're doing the max 180. Now let's go into this Pokemon that I didn't mention just yet, Drillbur. <laughs> is very interesting in this deck. I can see it getting fitted into the Coridon EX Ting Lu deck as well, but its ability dig about when you play this onto your bench from your hand, you get to discard three basic energy from your deck. So it's milling your deck, but it's also putting those energies into your discard that you're going to need to use for Sandy Shocks, which is why I say this might see some play in the Coridon Ting Lu deck. But of course, that is taking some bench space, so Coridon won't be doing a lot of damage. Uh, but we'll see about fixing that with the card right below it. So we also have, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the Luminion, the Squawkabilly, the Radiant Greninja. Then we have Professor Sada Vitality for starting off our supporters. Of course, Ancient Pokemon, you have to put this card in there to power it up and also get that draw support. And, you know, to just have the double Sada cards in there, we're running... Professor's Research, three of them, running three Iono, two Bosses Orders, and two Thornton. Now, of course, the reason I put this in there is because we're going to have Drillbold and Drillbur in there just sitting doing nothing pretty much. So if we're able to, we could just actually switch this in for something they knock out, maybe the Ranging Bolt EX or the Coridon. So at least that way we're maximizing our Ancient Pokemon on the bench. Now for our item cards, we're going to be running 4 Ultra Ball, 3 Nest Ball, 4 Gutsy Pickaxes to power up our Pokemon if we haven't discarded those energy, or at least get an easy draw, you know. And then we also have some Trekking Shoes for some more easy draw, Super Rots to bring some of that energy back if we need to, or Pokemon if we need to. We have Switches, a Prime Catcher, of course, really good card. We may see some other card, another A-Spec that fits better into ancient decks, but I'm still iffy if it's a really good card or if we just stick to Prime Catcher. For our stadium, we're gonna be running four Pokestop, and then for our energy, we're gonna have eight Fighting Energy. Again, it's the energy we're gonna be using to discard to get massive damage. 
and the, the three basic lightning energy to actually use the attack on Ranging Bolt EX. Now, as you can kind of see, you may be thinking to yourself, I'm missing the Ancient Boost Energy Capsule. I don't know if it's a good fit for this deck as it is. Of course, you could get that Raging Bolt EX to 290 or even the Coridon up to, what is that, 190, which is actually out of range for the um, Charizard EX's attack, right? If you haven't taken any prize cards. And then you're doing, you know, probably the 180 back to it. But I don't know how I feel about it in this format. You could, you know, replace maybe two of the Gutsy Pickaxes for two Ancient Boost Energies if you wanted to. But again, main focus here is going to be getting those energies discarded and attacking. So most likely, you're going to be doing that massive damage. And hopefully, they're not hitting you for 240 early on. I do see it as a good counter for the Mirror. If you have the Ancient Boost Energies on the Raging Bolt EX. Because if they discard only four of their basic uh, fighting energies they are only doing 280 yeah 280 i had to do the quick maths there but yeah it, it could be good for the mirror match if you wanted to have that instead of the gutsy pickaxes now of course this is one of the ancient decks that i'm going to be covering today and let's go ahead and move on to the second version which instead of having you know, these EX Pokemon for your attackers, it's got you going to focus on the non-EX version of Ancient Pokemon. So, starting off, we're seeing that Coridon that we saw in the previous deck list, but it's more of a main attacker. Again, we're running four of it, and its attack again is Primeval Battery, 30 times however many Ancient Pokemon you have in play. Hopefully, you'll have at least five to do the 150, um, and if you wanted to, I guess you could use the Shred, as an option, most likely you're not going to have to worry about that because I don't think too many Pokemon have abilities that stop these basics from attacking. Mostly it's B and E, X, sort of like the Mimikyu, and uh, that's honestly the only Pokemon I can think of at the moment. But So we have the four Coridon as an attacker, but then we move on to our other attacker, which is going to be our Roaring Moon. Basic, non-EX version, not the Roaring Moon EX, so we're not doing Frenzy Gouging, but instead we're doing Vengeful Feathers, which is a weird attack, thinking that a Salamence, uh, or an ancient Salamence has feathers. I guess, you know, some dinosaurs did have feathers back then. At least that's the current theory. Uh, we don't know, obviously. Uh, Vengeful Feathers does 10 more for each of your ancient Pokemon in your discard pile. So, most likely, this is going to be your end attacker towards the mid and late game. So it's going to be doing 70. Let's assume all your Coridon are in the discard and the other Pokemon are in the discard. At least that's doing an extra 60, so 130. And let's assume it's your last Roaring Moon that you have available. That is 7, 9, so you're doing 160. For two Darkness Energy, it's not bad. And again, it's a basic Pokemon, so you're going to be trying to do a lot of just like singular hits. You could buff this up with some uh, item cards later on. But for now, we're going to leave it at this. Side note before we continue on with the video, I did just notice that Roaring Moon's attack does 70 more for each ancient card in your discard. So technically, Professor Sada's and the Explorer's Guidance actually do count. Okay, so let's assume that we've discarded every single one of our ancient cards except for our Roaring Moons. We have still somehow four Roaring Moons not in the discard. That is essentially 210 extra damage onto that 70 for two darkness energy. That is a lot of damage. 280 for two energy. Now let's assume it's our last worry moon. We have no more. That's 240 plus that. Oh my gosh. It's this thing is actually pretty insane if you think about it. If you used up most of your ancient cards. Presumably you're not gonna be discarding all your ancient boost energies. Uh, but you know, I digress. Now, moving on to our other ancient Pokemon that we have in this deck, it's going to be Fluttermane. Now, they actually just released the newer version of this card for the English set. We used to have the uh, translation, I think, on this uh, screen right there, the background, I have the old translation, but the new one is probably popping up on the screen at the moment. Midnight Fluttering. It is essentially just like a Klefki, I guess. I, I don't know. There's probably a better Pokemon uh, that that this ability matches up with, but Klefki is probably the closest thing I can think of at the moment. 
Its attack hex curl does 90 and then put two damage counter onto your opponent's bench Pokemon any way you like. It's all right, but it's more for you know that stall ability there. And then we move on to our only other Pokemon, which is going to be Radiant Greninja. Of course, we have to run Sada's Vitality to put those energy onto the Pokemon. A lot of these Pokemon only need two, three if you're using the Flutter Mains attack for energy. So having four of these makes a lot of sense. Now, moving on to a new supporter in this deck, it is another ancient supporter. It's going to be Explorer's Guidance, which I don't know why. I don't even know who this is. Is Maybe it's a, some generic hit hiker or something. I, I don't know who this is. It might, maybe it's just a random new character that they put onto some um, art here. But look at the top six cards of your deck and then put two of them onto your hand and then discard the rest. So it works almost like a reverse, I'd say, Cold Rest, where instead of taking the leftovers and putting the two into the uh, Lost Zone, you're actually only putting those two into your hand and the rest go into the discard. It's good because you could discard some of those ancient Pokemon that way. Um, other than that, I, I don't know. I, I think it may be not that useful. We'll have to see how it does in, you know, tournament plays after rotation. Anyways, moving on to boss's orders. We have two of them. We have one Iono, one Roxanne. I don't know why I put two up. We have the four Earthen Vessel. We have four Nest Ball. We have two, three, sorry, Pokey Gears to grab our Explorer's Guides and Professor Sada's vitalities hopefully counter catchers dark patches for the roaring moon switch cards one heavy ball in case we prize one of our ancient pokemon hopefully only one and then we have palpad to put back the iono maybe the rock's hand or if we need to get the professor sada or boss back as well one super rod now this is the one time i think it's probably best to use a spec other than prime catcher ancient drum which to be honest I don't know how I feel about it. Draw a card for each ancient Pokemon in play. So if you have five, you're drawing five. If you have six, you're drawing six. It's a good card. At least you don't have to discard like a professor's research. But as an A spec, again, the only reason I keep it in here is because our other cards have stipulations. So either you have to have energy in the discard to use Professor Sada, or you have to discard cards just to draw two. You could use the Iona early on, but still, I don't know how I feel about it. Moving on, we have the Ancient Boost Energies. We have three of them. It's going to help because that 50 is going to add on to the Crydon and the Iron... Well, I was hired. There's no future Pokemon in here. The Roaring Moon pretty well. Each one of them is going to go up to 190 HP, which is a lot of HP for a basic Pokemon. We also have Defiant Ban if you want to do some extra damage with either Coridon or Rory Moon. EXP Share if you want to just move one of the energies over to it after it gets knocked out. We have Artisan to get pretty much all our basic Pokemon. And for our energy, we have 7 Darkness Energy because Rory Moon is probably going to be mostly our attacker. But then we do have 3 Fighting Energy for our Coridon, which requires only 1 Fighting for its first attack. But that is the deck. Honestly, this might be a good ancient box, to be honest. It might do pretty well if you can set up that Rory Moon early on. It's going to be doing massive damage constantly with that 70 plus however many ancient Pokemon or ancient cards you have in the discard. I'm really interested to see how well it does. Basic Pokemon have always had pretty bad decks, but... Hopefully this is sort of like Lost Mox and it does very well and it gets adopted pretty well into the meta. But yeah, you always hope the future is, you know, better for TCG with these new cards coming out. Which, speaking of the future, let's go ahead and take a look at these future decks that we have in store. So this first future box that we're going to take a look at is going to be slightly different from the next one, but mostly the same. But I wanted to show this one off at least because I feel like there might be some, you know, variation here and there. And I like to at least see a little bit of, you know, creativity when it comes to uh, these like de whatever like archetype boxes that usually happen. You don't want to always have just one for one. Hopefully you can just move some cards around 
And with so many future Pokemon currently out there, I think there could be a lot of variation within even like each single archetype, both ancient and future. But let's look at these future Pokemon right now. Maridon. Now this, a lot of people are excited because the accelerating peak, 40 damage, but you get to accelerate two energies onto your future Pokemon any way you like. So they go from your deck onto your Pokemon. It's a really good card to power up and a good way to attack for turn one if you're going second. So we're running two of these. I honestly feel like I should maybe add a third just so I ensure that I get this. But, you know, we could always just nest ball it or get it off of some other way and then switch it in. Moving on to our next card that we see, we see Iron Valiant. Of course, it's going to be there to tick our damage. Uh, up by 20 every time it switches in so this is the one that I wanted to um, Add a little bit of variation to the ones I've seen before I've seen a lot using the other cards mostly and then some other card we'll see in a while But iron valiant seems like it's been left out back in the past It's a future Pokemon and I feel like it should still see some play in here its attack is pretty decent but if you tack on the future boost energy and some abilities we'll see in a second it does really well so I feel like it still has a place in future boxes. But let's talk about Iron Crown EX. Cobalt Command allows your future Pokemon to do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, which is why I think Iron Valley might still see some play because that switching in 20 tick might be a good idea. Anyways, does 20 more damage from your future Pokemon, right? So obviously future box, mostly future Pokemon. Its attack is alright, Twinshottle, which does 50 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, but it can, that can be blocked by Manaphy, which we'll probably still see quite often. So probably won't see it attacking too often, which is why I wanted to keep it down to two for the Iron Crown. We'll probably only have one if we want the second one, because they do stack, so you could have 40 damage going on to your opponent's Pokemon from your future Pokemon. But I think at least two is a good spot for like the minimum that you want to have in a deck one it's a little low two i think is a perfect spot if you want a starting point now let's look at of course well we're skipping over iron hands but i mean you know what iron hands does amp you very much is going to be doing if you have those two iron crowns on uh, yeah iron crown exs on the bench you're going to be doing which is 120 160 if you have the booster you're doing 180 <laughs> that's a lot of damage isn't it and if even without the ancient uh, future boost energy you're actually doing more than enough just with the iron crowns to knock out a lukia v star so i think this is uh gonna be very interesting to see going forward taking three prize cards off a lot of v pokemon but of course mp very much gonna be very powerful in this deck but we're gonna have a new pokemon coming in to knock out those Charizard EX is a little bit easier. Iron Leaves EX. Rapid Veneer. Once during your turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may move as many energies as you want onto it. So, presumably, we're going to move at least two grass energy, or at least one grass energy onto it. That way, we can use Prismatic Edge, which does 180, onto a Charizard, which gets doubled to 360. It's a good way to knock out those Charizard EXs. And it's starting to seem like this deck is going to be almost a counter to a lot of decks. I mean, you have Iron Hands to hit any Lightning weakness, you have Iron Leaves to hit Grass weakness. I don't think there's anything really that's weak to Psychic that we need to worry about at the moment. But if we ever wanted to hit maybe the Fighting weakness, we could add in, I believe it's Iron Moth is fighting no that's slither wings I, iron moth is fire so i i don't know how prominent grass is going to be but you, i guess if you wanted to counter iron leaves you could have an iron moth in there so moving on to our last um pokemon in the deck we're going to have a radiant greninja and then for our supporters we're going to have a professor's research three of them three arvin two pro bosses orders two iono and then for our item cards we're going to have four nest balls because I mean, we don't have any evolution Pokemon, so we can just use Nest Balls. But keep in mind, Iron Leaves does have to come from your hand to use its ability. So again, keep that in mind. You don't just use the Nest Ball on it. You will probably want to use an Ultra Ball to put it into your hand and then play it. 
We have four switches because, again, all basic Pokemon. Two, four regular switches because Iron Valiant EX. We want to have the switches to ping. Then we have three Ultra Balls. Again, I do want to emphasize that Iron Leaves EX. You need to put it from your hand to your bench to use the ability. And then we have Earthen Vessels, although, you know, it's a future deck. Uh, we do want to get some energy that way. We could see a different card go in here instead of this Ancient Earthen Vessel, but I feel like it still has a good place in pretty much any deck. We have Hisui and Heavy Ball because they're all basic Pokemon. One of them is prized, potentially getting to get prized. We have a Counter Catcher, a Lost Vacuum. We have a Reboot Pawn. Now, this one is a new one. Attach a basic energy from your discard pile to each of your future Pokemon in play. So if you have, you know, I don't know, I want to say six future Pokemon, maybe you have five because you have the Greninja in play. You have five in play, six hopefully. You're attaching one energy to each one of them if there's five or six in the discard. Going forward, we have the future boost energy capsules to increase our damage and obviously get the free retreat off of that. So great for Iron Valiance. And then we have one Heavy Baton, which is going to go onto your Iron Hand EX. So if it gets knocked out, which might happen, you get to move the uh, three energy from it, from the Ampu very much that you need. I think it needs four though. You can at least move three of those onto your, uh, your Pokemon any way you like. So it's kind of almost like a reverse EXP share where EXP share has to be on the Pokemon you're going to attach from. But Heavy Baton, essentially, if that Pokemon is the one that gets knocked out, you move the energy away from it. So, like EXP share, but reverse. Then we have a Technical Machine Devo to devolve some of our Pokemon because we are going to be pinging it with the Iron Valiant EX. Makes sense to have at least have that. And we have two Simple Sinnoh uh, because, as you can see, no special energy, so it doesn't matter to us. And it will stop, I don't know, I guess like Lugia's. Uh, there are a few lost boxes that still run the jet energy and other things like that. We may able be able to stop the mist energy that's coming out later. And then we have town store to grab one of our three different uh, Pokemon tools, either the boost energies, the heavy baton or the TM Devo. And then for our energy, we are going to run five psychic, three basic grass energy and three basic lightning energy. This is, of course, to cover both the Psychic, the Lightning, and Grass Pokemon that we're going to be playing in this deck. And of course, Maridon only needs one of any energies, so it doesn't matter to it. The only thing I would maybe add in here is if you wanted to add two water energy. I don't know how I feel about that, but if you wanted to use Radiant Greninja to attack with, that is an option. But this is one of the versions of Future Box that I have to show you guys today. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this is the other list we're gonna be taking a look at today. And it looks probably a little bit similar, but there is one card and a few actually others added into this compared to the previous one we saw. So we have four Maridon this time instead of the two that I had in the previous list, but now we have a new Maridon. It's a Maridon EX, but not the lightning version that we used to from base set, but this is going to be the future version that's a dragon type. So this one has Repulsor Bolt, which is a 60 plus, and if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, it does 100 more. So I could see this paired well with, let's say you were pinging with the Maridon, the baby Maridon, pinging it with 40, and then switching into this, and then hitting for that 40 that you did earlier, plus 60 plus 100, 200 damage is not bad. Um, but I could also see this now going with the Iron Valiant, you know, switching in an Iron Valiant pinging and then switching it back out for the Maridon to do the 160 plus the 20 you ping for 180. So that is an option. But then of course then you do have its Cyber Drive attack, which is essentially like the Lightning Maridon's version of a 220 attack. And then during the next turn, you can't use that attack. Well, you can't use that attack, but you can use, of course, the Repulsor Bolt. So... Compared to Yellow Maridon, it replaces the ability with a, a secondary attack. Now, moving on, again, we do have the Iron Crown EXs. This time we're running four of them. So you could, if you wanted to, put four Iron Crown EX onto the bench and do an extra 
80 damage each time. So to be fair, that ride on the axe does get pretty strong with that. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> Maybe doing 240 for two energy is not bad. Anyways, then we have two Iron Handsy Xs. You know, it's increasing the counts to some different numbers for this deck compared to the other. But then we still have a singular Iron Leaves in this deck. Followed by, of course, our Radiant Greninja. And then for our supporters, for Arvin, for Professor's Research, two Bosses Orders, two Iono. And then for our item cards, we have three Nestfall, two Energy Switches, a little different because we're going to hopefully want to move some stuff around instead of just singular attaching. We have two switch cards, one earthen vessel, then we have one heavy ball, one lost vacuum, one pal pad to put back maybe our Arvins or our boss's orders. We also have a super rod and this is a card that didn't see a lot of play in this current format but we probably might see a lot more in post-rotation, it's going to be Techno Radar. Now this, in order to use it, you have to discard one card from your hand, but then you get to draw two future Pokemon from your deck. So this is very helpful in getting maybe that Iron Leaves in order to put it from your hand onto the bench to attach energy to it to knock out something like a Charizard EX. Or if you want to start setting up another Iron Crown or, you know, whatever other attacker you need, for that situation so that's a good card and i think it's going to see a lot more play now with future box is that is it's going to be a thing moving on we have a reboot pod of course to attach any discarded energy onto our future pokemon we have four future boost energy we have two heavy batons because this time we're running two iron hands we have two exp shares again kind of like the heavy baton but you know just it has to be attached to the pokemon you're going to attach the energy to after that Pokemon and the active gets knocked out. We have Town Store to grab our item cards. Sorry, not item cards, not item cards anymore. They're Pokemon tools after the errata. And then for our basic energy, we're gonna be running four lightning energy, three of the grass energy and two of the psychic energy. So again, this deck is slightly different from the future box that we saw earlier. You can kind of see that it's Pretty similar, I mean the Pokemon are pretty much the same, just different numbers and the addition of one over the other one, so it's pretty close. I honestly think that we're going to see a lot of variation when it comes to both the Ancient and Future boxes. Probably more in the Future than the Ancient, just because the Ancient box can vary if you're going to run EXs or just the non-EX Pokemon. Maybe you'll see a Slither Wings in there for the fighting, but other than that, You'll probably not see as much variation as you'll see in the future boxes but yeah that is the second future box that i'm showing off today hopefully all four of these were pretty interesting to you guys i'm really excited for rotation i <laughs> can't tell you how much i don't like the current stagnant format right now i had hoped that paldean fates would increase you know some variation at least a little bit but I'm still playing a lot of my old decks with no new cards from Paldean Fates, really. A lot of that was just reprints. So it was a little disappointing that we're not going to be seeing anything until April in tournament play. But, you know, hopefully April comes sooner than later. But while you're waiting, why not get subscribed so you can catch some deck reviews on some non-meta decks that I'm working on. Anyways, guys, as always, stay safe and thanks for watching.